Hey, Sets Class, this is another question from our 10.2 homework. Uh, in this question, we are doing a hypothesis test uh, for correlation. And we are trying to determine if there is a um, strong enough correlation between these two data sets, systolic and diastolic uh, blood pressures. And uh, I want to walk you through how to do one of these with this question. So the very first question, it says, uh, there's 12 different medical students on this one person's blood pressure, and we're trying to find a if there is a linear correlation between these two at this uh, p-value. So alpha equals 0.05. So what are the null and alternate hypo hypothesis? The, the null hypothesis is always going to be h naught is the parameter equals some number. So in this case, equals 0, equals 0, equals 0, not equals 0. So b's out. But the reason why it's um, D is because it doesn't tell us one way or the other that the the um, correlation is positive or negative. So this is saying there's no correlation, uh, no correlation, no correlation. This is saying the correlation is negative, correlation is positive. And then the one that ends up being the answer because we're not told uh, one way or the other is just, is there enough information to include linear correlation uh, exists, linear meaning positive or negative. So we're not told one direction, that's, that's why D is the right answer here. Alright, now construct a scatter plot. To do a scatter plot, you just put the data in your calculator or Excel, however you want to do it. Um, if I uh, open it in Excel, I can easily make this into a scatter plot. Alright, I'm going to click Enable Editing. And now these options are available to us. We got there's the auto song, all that different stuff. But anyway, what I want to do is just highlight it all. You can even grab the names of the data. And then go up to insert. And then right here, this is scatter plot. And just choose the scatter plot option. So there's what it looks like. And you can kind of match graphs with that one. Okay, so that's the one that it looks like. Um, all the data is right there between 120 and 145-ish, 150-ish uh, on, on the X's. So there's a 120. You know, you, you can sort it that way. You can see that that's it. But you can also see that these are out. C and D are out because our um, it, it's increasing left to right. As we go left to right, it gets higher. So that's how we know it's not either one of those. And then the way we know it's not this one is because it's got values down here in the 20s. Okay, there's no values in our top row, our x values that are down in the 20s. Okay, so that's how I know it's not this one. So that's the only one that makes sense here. Okay, now once we have the scatter plot, we can run the regression. Now I'm going to show you a couple ways to get this. You can get that from Excel. Once you have your scatter plot, you can right click any data point. And then click on Add Trend Line. And then when you add your trend line option over here, just scroll down and do Display Equation in R squared. All right. Now this is R squared. So if you wanted R, you'd have to take the, you'd have to take the uh, square root of that if you wanted to do it that way. So point seven nine eight six. Square root of that is 0.89, roughly 4. So 0.894. That's one way to get it. Uh, another way to get it when you when you uh, have your data in Excel, that's really easy. It's just you know pick any cell other than the where your data is. So I'm just right beside the rightmost column and just start typing correlation. So C O R R, and then here it is C O R E L returns the correlation coefficient between two data sets. So double click there. It says array one. That's like the first column, your X's. And then comma, array two. That's your Y's. And then I hit enter. And then there's the 0.894 also. All right, you can also, I mean, if you type it in, correlation, um, you could do it backwards. Y first, and then X. 
All right, it doesn't matter. So the uh, oops, the correlation is 0.894, but I get it from there or here. Okay. Now again, the table is R squared. If you use if you use the trend line feature here, so just make sure to take that square root. All right. Now the test statistic, oh, it's, it's not going to give you that right here with Excel. Right, there is a way to do it with Excel, but I'm going to show you how to do it. The two easiest ways um, with what's going to be available to you is your calculator if you have one of these TI calculators or um, StatCrunch. So I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. So on your calculator, you're going to press Stat, you're going to come over here to Test, and then you're going to look for, and this is the easiest thing to do is hit Up linear regression t-test. So you'll hit enter and you'll tell it where your data is. Now if you don't have your data in the list 1 or list 2 on your calculator you'll need to put it there. All right, mine is already there so I can just go back to it. So again to uh, stat test up linear regression t-test. Okay so mine's in L1 and L2. Frequency leave it at 1. We, we want to use the alternate hypothesis from uh, part A the very first part so not equal to zero All right, and then we just go down to calculate okay so there's our t value 6.296 roughly 6.297 to three decimal places all right the p value rounded to three decimal places notice this is e the negative five that means there's four leading zeros so point one zero two zero three zero four zero and then an eight nine four so to three decimal places that's just going to be three zero 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 so that's where the p-value comes from okay now the p-value the way that these tests work p-value is compared to alpha and if the p-value is less than alpha then there's evidence to support the claim that there is a correlation so our p-value is zero. That's going to be less than any alpha, no matter how small alpha is. The smaller alpha is, the more significant the test. So alpha equals 0.05. That's kind of a standard value for alpha. Then we have, um, uh, because the p-value is less than 0.05, there is evidence to support the claim. There's a linear correlation. Okay. So, but anyway, that's where the p-value comes from. It comes from running the linear regression t-test. Right now, StatCrunch, another easy way to do this would be just click on this, open in StatCrunch. And once we have it, we go to Stat, and then we want Regression, and then just Simple Linear Regression. So click Simple Linear Regression. Our X variable is Systolic, Systolic, and then don't worry about this. All right, leave these at zeros. Confidence interval for level of 0.95. That's 1 minus this. So 1 minus 0.05 is the 0.95. That's where that's coming from. So just leave that at 0.95. Or, you know, if this changes like 0.01, then that would be 0.99. Okay, no transformation. All right, just compute. So really all you have to do is just label who's who. And then um, tell it your, your level. All right, and then compute. And then what we're after here on this table is the things that will show up are your t-statistic right there, the 0.6297 is right there okay, it's for the slope, so 0.6297 to three places. And then the p-value, it says less than 0 0.0001, so to three places. Again, there's the three places we would round. This one, based on the next digit, is a 1, so we would round it down to 0 .000 again as well. All right, the linear correlation does show up here. The 0.894 is right here. All right, R correlation coefficient. So you can get all that stuff from here. But again, how did I get it? One more time. Stat. Regression. Simple linear. And then basically just once you get your variables, you can just go straight to compute. And there's your numbers.